there are divisions here here over here on to this line on the upper they are all horizontally connected similarly these are also horizontally connected whereas here they are vertically connected what it means is that this as you can see there are a few numbers as you can see here this is 1 to 5 columns 5 to 10 15 20 25 20, like that this is for your reference that the number the columns are numbered so when i connect a wire here uh, which column let me take 10 line if i connect one more in the same line so these two since they belong as you can see in the same line they are interconnected they are fused it's as good as joining them like this so if you connect it in a different line that means these as you can see there are two different lines so this end is different this end is different same thing happens here on the horizontal if i connect a wire here another wire here they are internally they, since they are all connected on the same line they are internally connected if you don't want we connect it like this so generally these lines are used for connecting positive to one end and negative to the other end because they belong to different lines usually the horizontal lines are reserved for power supply connections positive and negative now let me show you how to do this phase shift circuit phase shift oscillator how do you construct using the breadboard for this what you need basically is a transistor first Uh, and this is your transistor as you can see yeah is it clear is it seen yeah yeah so you hold it like this there is a slight uh, projection you can see a projection that's your emitter the middle one is base and this is collector so what we do is we connect the, this is a phase shift so we connect emitter here okay and this is your base this is your collector and phase shift oscillator follows what is known as a barkhausen criterion and the criterion is a minimum condition that the open loop the closed loop gain is a beta is equal to 1 or that means the total phase reversal as a, as a part of the output is connected to the input as a feedback the total loop gain should be either zero or multiples thereof so either zero or 360 so to provide that as you all know the transistor there is a phase reversal between the input and the output which is that means output is phase reversal of 180 degrees with the input so a transistor alone gives you the emitter side and the collector side a phase difference of 180 degrees to this we are adding a rc differentiator network where each of them gives a 60 degrees phase difference since we are using three of them with a resistor you can see it is what is the color code here brown black and orange so it is 10k and if you use three of these uh, networks each of them will give you a 60 degrees phase difference So now what we do is first we will connect. We'll I'll show you. Keep all this here. You are able to see these 10k resistors, all 10k resistors, and we use this is not four of them. You need four 10k resistors and 3.01 microfarads. And how do you read the 0.01 microfarad? You will read the number. It will be written as 103. So one zero three three capacitors. You can see the small ones, three of them. Yes. So now you need to connect. These are all to be made straight and connect them like this. First capacitor, then the second capacitor. then this is your third capacitor now from here connect the resistors down 
whatever resistance you kept them there this end should go to the ground this end connect it here push it inside put it to the ground before you make a connection it should be made straight all the wires should be made straight and there are springs push it properly inside to ensure that a proper connection is maintained okay then so that means there is a junction formed here between the capacitor and a resistor take one more wire from here one more resistor Yes, push it inside. Then one more here. Right. So each of them will give you ninety, uh, nine, sixty, sixty, sixty. So sixty-three is a one eighty plus another one eighty from the transistor. Together it is three sixty. Now you need a resistive divider network here. Take. Uh, 22k resistor keep it here and show them this is what is the color code for 22k red red and orange bring it here between this and this and there is a center of the breadboard here on to the right and on to the left there is a disjoint that means you try to keep all these towards this or towards this or if you make some connections on the left and some on the right then you need to connect a jumper connection from here you connect it here right so this 22k and 10k forms what is known as a voltage divider network so the voltage coming here gets divided between these two points It's not pushed in properly, so it should be pushed in, right? Then, yeah. Oh, so now what we do is connect a collector resistor. You need a resistor and a collector also. So take one more ten k resistor. So connect it from this end, from this end, connect it here onto the top. Push it towards this end. One, two, three, four, five. Here, one, two, three, four, five. Try to keep them either to this side or to this side. This has come out. Connect them back. From here, it should go here. Now you need a coupling capacitor. So the coupling capacitor is of the magnitude of point one microfarad. So the number is one zero four. Take out one zero four. This is the capacitor that we are using. This is the capacitor that we are using. Connect it here to the coupling capacitor between this end and somewhere here. Between. This end, this end, and anywhere here. Right. So now you need a feedback connection. I am making use of this wire here. I am making use of this wire here to connect the feedback. The feedback is between this point 
and to your collector. So where is the collector going here? An oscillator is a circuit which oscillates on its own without any input. And you will get positive of the power supply here, negative of the power supply to the ground. You are giving a DC power supply and connect the CRO at these two points. You connect the CRO positive here and negative to ground. Power supply positive here, negative to ground. The DC power supply is a DC power. By making use of the transistor as an amplifier, it amplifies and converts it into an AC. So conversion from DC to AC is the role of an oscillator. The function of an oscillator is to convert the DC into an AC signal. So since you have taken these C values as 0.01, theoretically the frequency of oscillation is given by 1 by 2 pi RC under root 6 plus RC by R. And your RC is 10K, all each of these Rs are 10K. So your RC by R ratio is 1. So therefore your frequency of oscillation is 1 by 2 pi RC under root 10. Substitute R is equal to 10K and C is equal to 0.1. And as we discussed in the last class, the frequency of oscillation theoretically is around 500 Hz. And when you connect it to a CRO, you should be able to see the same thing there. So and repeat this experiment by changing R at once and C at once. So for the sake of convenience, since we want to maintain RC by R ratio as 1, let us not change R, let us change only the C value to point out to repeat this experiment for these values and the frequency of oscillation by substituting 1 by 2 pi RC, R is 10K and C is 0.02 microfarads. The frequency of oscillation theoretically is around 250 Hz and you have to connect a CRO here and check for the frequency and see where you get the same value. Okay, so now you have to take to the lab and convert it, connect it to the CRO and check for frequency of oscillation.